So, uh, I am Bradley Berklich, and I go to Kenyon College, and, and I am in a group called Two Drink Minimum, uh, where we do stand up uh, once every semester, or possibly this year, once in the first semester, and not at all in the second semester, but that would be fine. Um, but we essentially uh, have selected a stand-up comedian to come to campus. Uh, his name is Moses Storm. He costs $4,000. We are going half seas with the CDO, which is the, no, that's not right, with the Cox Center for Wellness, because laughter is the best medicine. I, I don't exactly know. It, it'll hey, be co- Hey, Cox, Cox. Cox Center. Cox. I got it. I bet. Hey, do you think they do, yeah. you think they do STI testing at the Cox Center? They do. It's free. It's actually very helpful. It's oh, really yeah, that good. is. It's yeah. actually mm-hmm. very it's helpful. Never mind. I, I shouldn't have joked about that. That's very mm-hmm. serious. That's right. Um, I but, have, you, you, so you said you can buy him for $4,000? Rent is better. Rent is better. Oh, but, okay. Because you said he costs two... $4,000, and I just didn't know. Yeah. Well, it's it's maybe not quite exactly like that. What do you think his but, figure is? Like, how much would you have to pay him to have mm, him? It's probably more than that. Not like as a servant or a slave or anything, just like as like a on retainer. Like he lives there and he'll just do stand up for you whenever you need it. I don't know. In in his contract, Ryder, there are two stipulations. One is that he have a full length mirror exclusively for his use. Okay. And you shatter the mirror after it's done and it can't well, uh, no other human being can look upon it beforehand? No, we actually got him a mirror. It's normal. It's a pretty normal mirror. Has and anyone else looked is, at it? Uh no. Not okay, yet, good. exclusively for his use. Okay, and what else did you do? And uh, he also stipulates in his contract that he requires a uh, like a meal out with uh, the people who are bringing him here. So, but it needs to be at some place, quote unquote, local. But I live in Mount Vernon, Ohio. Not really. I live in Gambier, Ohio, which is even smaller than Mount Vernon, Ohio, which is already small. And in Mount Vernon, Ohio, because it's so small, nothing is open past 10 o'clock, and his show ends at 10.15. So we are going to Buffalo Wild Wings. Now, Bradley. Not even, like, the regular fast food joints are open after 10 o'clock. Like, like we went to a McDonald's, and it, legit, <laughs> it legitimately closed at, like, 10. Like, what the fuck? Question... Yeah. Why could you not go to dinner beforehand? Because he wouldn't even be here and he didn't want to. He didn't want, so he would rather go to Buffalo Wild Wings, which I don't blame him. I love, bu- we I love we me some Buffalo Wild Wings. We haven't wings, even but... asked. We, we were, he's just like, we want to go, he's like, I want to go someplace local. And we were like, Moses Storm, okay, and we're going to take him to Buffalo Wild Wings. And none of us can drive. None of us, like, have a car to, to drive. So, like, a uh, palanquin he, he, litter scenario. Yeah, but but he rented one, so um, I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna make a, a, an actual real-life actor, like, a man who's been on Conan, and on the new Arrested Development, and on Unfriended, the Facebook movie. That's uh, the no, best Facebook movie. That's the best movie. one. Like, a legitimate actor will be driving us to Buffalo Wild Wings, so he can eat on his own dime. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> It He's going to so drive you to Buffalo Wild Wings. Fucking funny to the, me. <laughs> the local restaurant, the local flavor of Gambier, Ohio. Uh, they have a special, uh, a special that franchise own or like that franchise location only Gambier sauce, which mm-hmm. is, it's, it's just mayo mixed with chipotle ketchup. It's not like, it's not anything special, but no. they call it Gambier sauce. Make it all, it's the local flavor. Um, I think that's good. I mean, if I were an actor who'd been on Conan and the new Arrested Development and the Facebook horror movie, Unfriended, <laughs> I sure would like to go to a, a Buffalo Wild Wings in Gambier, Ohio with a bunch of teenagers in yeah. my car that I rented. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. I'm sure he's going to fucking love it. Can a person who's being rented rent something? I think that's allowed. Are you I sure? I am. No. Okay, but well, let's let's think about the pros and cons of that. Because I, I think there are pros to letting people who can be rented rent something. But then there's mm-hmm. also the cons of, like, does that give them too much power? Mm-hmm. Well. Like, he could escape at any time. You could pay him rent to come do a show with you, and then he could just get in his car and leave halfway through the set. That would be bad. Or he could, like... 
have an apartment, which means he could stop touring for a short amount of time and stay in one place without having to pay nightly rent, uh, like hotel. Is Does hotel payment count as rent? What even is that? Oh, shit. I don't know. I don't even know what that means. Okay, we got to back up. Let's define hotel. Okay. <laughs> Should we do our podcast? Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, good idea is a brain crust. Good yeah, idea. it is. Good idea is a brain trust your brain can trust. It's a comedy podcast where we find creative, actionable solutions to your real-life problems. I'm Aiden Kinsella, and the brain crust would be the cerebral cortex. I'm Bradley Berklich, and the brain crust would be the skull. And this is Good Idea. Bradley? (laughs) Yeah? The skull is not part of the brain. Yeah, The skull would be like the pizza box. (laughs) Yeah, but the pie isn't like defined by the crust no but like the, the crust whole is thing part is of the, the pie, pie but only part of it's the head no i mean all of it's the head but only part of it's the brain and the cherry bits are just the just the brain i went out for breakfast this morning and i was served um i ordered a uh, stuffed french toast which was very good except uh-huh. um, the topping on it was just raspberry jam but it was like a jar of raspberry jam so like was the jam outside the jar or did they serve it in the container the on jam top was of the outside toast. the jar, an entire okay. jar's worth of, of raspberry jam on top of Just sort of, of upended th- on the Three pieces the of French toast slathered with with um, uh, cream cheese, and it was very good for, like, the beginning of it. And then I wanted to throw up by the second slice, which I then realized halfway through it was composed entirely of cream cheese. Now, I, I understand that that made you want to <laughs> throw up, but as as I am am want to do... I do need to point out that there are some uh, there are some sides that might disagree with you, like the side that says, you know, French toast that's just cream cheese is maybe the best form of French to- French toast. It's extremely um, extremely useful product. It has a lot of different. Uh, what is you? It's very useful. What is the word? Hey, Bradley. What's the word for when you can do some like a lot of applications? There we ah. go. <laughs> it has a lot of applications beyond what normal French toast can do. Because you can't really spread normal French toast unless it's super undercooked and oversaturated. You can't really spread it like a like a cream cheese. Mm-hmm. Where uh, whereas um you can spread cream cheese like a cream cheese. Uh, normal ah. French toast does not go well on a bagel, really, even if you could spread it. I feel like the flavors just are too similar, but a, like Uncanny Valley almost, like it wouldn't go mm-hmm. well. Um, yes. F- you could never use regular French toast that isn't made of cream cheese as as a cheesy topping to put in your, uh, to thicken up your mac and cheese. Um, these are just, these are just some ideas. And I think French toast made entirely of cream cheese is a great, is a great one. And I can't mm-hmm. see any flaws with it or any alternatives to the idea of making French toast out of cream cheese. Uh, I can. It is uh, anything else. Anything else at any all, Any other actually. thing. Okay. Any well, other thing. I, you know, most I'm thinking things. about it more, and I'm realizing that most things are a better alternative to to cream cheese, French toast, cream I'm cheese. I'm so glad we've, we've reached this conclusion. <laughs> I had to re- I had to reevaluate some things. It took Your me a stance? while, but I had to really reevaluate my stance on uh, you know. Yeah, you know. Um speaking of of thickening something, I have a prompt for you, Bradley. Mhm. So I mentioned thickening mac and cheese. My prompt for you is something that I tweeted from my own Twitter account at the good idea because I was on the I was on the Wendy's and by on I mean at the Wendy's. Uh, I was at the Wendy's uh-huh. nearby my house and I was bringing my food back to my table, and I looked over at Amanda, and I said, "Thick and nuggets." Ah, and she cursed you. And I, yeah, and now I'm with her actually, magic powers. I'm only two feet tall now. Ooh. Um, and I don't get to grow back up to be six feet tall until I admit that thick and nuggets isn't funny. But, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna get there because it's so funny. Because it's very funny. It's just too funny. It's too funny. Well, so Bradley, how would you make thicken nuggets? Uh, I, well, hmm. You see, this. The, my initial reaction is I have to essentially genetically engineer a chicken to make it have a fat ass, but I hate I hate that so much. So maybe just like chicken nuggets, but they just a little bigger. They're just like, a little you would bigger. You look at that chicken nugget and you're like, wow, that, that's, that's kind of thick. thick. Boy. That chicken nugget has some girth to it. 
that could be that could be good um i think what's tough about that for me is that I was trying to think of a pun where I could say I like like something like I like big clucks and I cannot lie, but I didn't know if clucks was a good a good enough analogy to chickens. Like I didn't know if that would be something that would have made sense if I had said it out loud. That's a pretty good and analogy. It's it's I a like pretty that. I don't even know if I use the word analogy correctly. Um I have no idea. Thicken nuggets. We they're a little bit bigger. So they're not from Burger King. They're not like the nugs from Burger King, because those are extremely small. I mean, no mm-hmm. wonder you only get ten for ninety nine cents, am I right? Haha, <laughs> comedy. Um that was my observational comedy about how small Burger King chicken nuggets are. If you want more of that, shoot a text to uh five 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 at uh and comment yes. Um Yes. If I had to make a thicken nugget, I think my first step would be we got to get Monsanto out. Okay. And I think we've talked about Monsanto on this podcast before. Big, giant, evil company. Uh, screws over farmers. You know, not not, not really a great um, a great thing to have in our in our nation. Mm-hmm. Just for, for anyone involved except for the execs at Monsanto. Um, I do think if we can get Monsanto out of the picture, that allows farmers a little more freedom. Because Monsanto isn't very cool or progressive. So... I, I think that they're still uh, among the opinion that, um, mm, what's the word? Like skinny chickens, skinny chicks. Yeah. I think they're they're very pro skinny chicks, and they're not very bo- body positive. Shkicks. So, skicks, as as Shkicks. it is commonly known. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if we can get Monsanto out of the picture and have a more body positive, uh, have the farmers that are more body positive feeding their chickens uh, appropriate diets. Mm-hmm. We'll get thicker chickens, and I think I think as we as we not every a farmer thicken, is going to be doing will. that a thicken, yeah. Um, Which also is is to just denote a thick person. But continue, not every farmer, not every, not all farmers. Um, you know, not all farmers. Uh, <laughs> so Dumb. yeah, you know, you get you get thicken nuggets. Um, I think I think maybe uh, farmersonly.com updates their website too. So um, when you're describing yourself, you either click thicken or chicken. If you're like thick but you're a little small, you're a thicken nugget. <laughs> so there's thicken, chicken, thicken nugget. <laughs> chicken chicken nugget. nugget, which is the is petite if we're doing dress sizes. Petite <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't funny. I should be banned. Oh, wait, here we go, I got it. Okay. But butt chicks. Like butt cheeks, but chickens. Ah. That one's good. Okay, should we do a yes. different prompt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Here. Let me choose. Okay, this is me because we we need prompts. We need prompts. We do. Uh, if you bring back one item when time traveling, what would it be if it's a random time period before now? So this is more almost – this is almost a serious idea. It's been a while since we've had a legit serious idea, but I'm just curious. Like what would be the most optimal item to bring back? If you were to land anywhere in the past, the most optimal item to bring back, assuming I would land anywhere in the past. Yes. Roll of toilet paper. Ooh. Hear me out. Runs out fast. Lots, lots of applications. Okay. Yes. First of all, I could show it to the, to like the village smart person or whatever, and they could make a whole bunch more toilet paper. Okay, good. Okay, hold on. Smart smart people are not... I have to remind myself of this sometimes. Smart people are not the same as a replicator in Star Trek. Okay. Let's try that again. Regardless of its limited supply, Bradley. Yes. Back in the day, no toilet paper. Pretty much any time before the year 2000, people didn't have toilet paper. It was all just leaves and hands. Mostly hands. All right. So bringing back toilet paper... The odds are, if it's a randomized time, you'll probably land in a time where there wasn't toilet paper. Um, Mm -hmm. Just because we've only had toilet paper for like 19 years. Uh, Best thing since Betty White. That's true. Things you can use toilet paper for. Wipe ass. TP Mm. house. Make your friend look like a mummy. Wipe friend's ass. That's good. Do do you have a pooping buddy? You need a pooping buddy. Wipe, wipe the mummy's ass if they, if you land no, 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 in no, Egypt. In general, they're just a little. You know when you wake up and your eyes are just a little goopy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole mummy is like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, so it's they're just a little gross. 
I guess because that's the mummies were like that, and they're from Egypt. That's why we call it sand in our eye. That's why we call it Egypt. What? That. That's why we call it Egypt. Bradley, are you trying to do a now that's what I call music joke? I don't even know what that is. Okay, that's fair. I don't I don't know what's happening right now. Are you like whipping when you say Egypt? Because I'm no, imagining uh, you're like, now that's what I call pff, Egypt. Like, you know, like giving a whip that impression? in between. That's what I'm getting from it. That's what I'm imagining. That's, that's pretty good. I'll take that. Do you have <laughs> any idea what the joke was? Or were you just saying now that's what I call Egypt? Well, that, I mean, isn't it? Mummies. Okay. Isn't what, what? What do you call Egypt? Not mummies. No, I actually can't. No, I can't think of anything else. Anything Egyptian at all? It's all no. Oh wait, hold on. I got it. Boats. All right. What? Boats. Coats. Boats with a B. Boats. It's next to C in the alphabet. Easy to confuse it. Um, yeah, boats. The Egyptians had a lot of them. All right. And that's, well, that's what I call Egypt. That's pretty good. I can't think of anybody else who did boats. It was mostly just Egypt doing boats back then. Yeah, they were basically like people. They had that big river, so they needed a lot of boats in it. Yeah, it was just a lot of Is a river boats. still a river if there's no boats? If a river claps and there's no boat there to hear it, does it come out the other side uh, That's into the ocean? That's an interesting physics problem. One would say that uh, matter uh, defines time because matter and energy and space and time are all interlinked. So, if, How do boats but it, connect to that, so though? If, if there's a river, which is to say a location, okay, uh, or, or even, even sort of a place where boats can exist... But there's no boats. Like there's, there's not no a matter. lot of places where boats can exist. It's That's mostly like just rivers. So the edge of the universe. And since there's no boats, there's no time. So if you go no into matter. outer space, you've basic and there's no boats up there. Like no no sort of like Final Fantasy starship, like big boat boys. Yeah. Then at that point, you have reached the end of the universe. Well, if you go into space and there's nothing. Like there's not even thing. Doesn't even have to be a boat. Then you've reached the end of the universe. But Absolutely. then if you're in space, isn't there a thing in space? Well, there would be, but we assume that you would be there without really being there. So you'd like send a proxy, like your friend Dave. Okay, and, and he as we talked about either, on but... the last episode, if you can't see it, it doesn't exist. Excellent. Yes. Good. To remember. It. So. Okay. I like this. All right, different prompt. It seems like we got this one figured out. What was the prompt? I forgot. I don't know. If you bring back one item when time traveling, what would it be? Was well, it, it seemed I said toilet paper, but it, now it sounds like boats is important. It, I mean, a boat would be very important. Well, because if you land in a time period before boats, like then nothing exists and you die. Well, where the fuck are you going? You can't go anywhere without a boat. That's Shit's also all water. A World's like eighty percent water. It's like the human body. Okay, wait. Okay, speaking of of that, fuck, dude. Um, I just started taking ADHD medication today for the first okay. time. Vivance, just like a basic a basic thing. I will point out my favorite thing that was on the uh, that was on on the warnings label was that it may impair someone's ability to operate a vessel. A vessel. <laughs> A vessel. It, speci- it uses the specific word, a vessel. <laughs> um, and I just thought that was really good because I like the idea of somebody taking ADHD medication and then going, it's like, time to do my boat. <laughs> time to boat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have a submarine appointment at three o'clock. Oh, oh shit. I took my meds this morning. I can't go. Can't. Oh, it was no. specifically vessel. Did it also say like what? It also like, said like equipment? cars and equipment. And, but I just, you know, what's funnier if I just talk about the fact that it said vessel. When I think of vessel, I think of like a bathysphere, like a fucking, 
I don't even know how to describe it. Like like the, the round thing with a porthole in the front that just descends into the ocean and comes back mm-hmm. up like and you're like some like nineteen twenties science fiction novel. Like that's exclusively yeah, like a what Jules I Burn, Like a Jules yeah. Burn. <laughs> exactly. So if you have one of those Don't take ADHD medication. Cause you need the vessel. The vessel's more important. Yeah. Um Okay. Next prompt. Yeah, your turn, my dude. We gotta make a pseudonym, Bradley. Any pseudonym? Yes, Bradley. Uh, I think if you were an evil villain and you called yourself Elon Musk, that would be a pretty good pseudonym because nobody would even know. That's bad. I don't want to talk about Elon Musk. I don't want to even. He's just. I have nothing against. He's just too much of a meme, and I've I've wrought upon myself uh, far too much of a of a of a topic for me to handle in this moment. So we're gonna That's ignore fair. that. I think if you called yourself Mister Dan Cool. That would be a pretty good nickname. Pretty good. Dan pseudonym. Cool. That's yeah. really good. Because then it communicates to people that like you can hang. Yeah. But also that your name is Daniel. <laughs> I agree. When your name really isn't Daniel. So it's good to communicate that your name is Daniel. I have an idea. Yeah. What if I did a pseudonym and my pseudonym was, well, let's say I'm you just for, yeah. for to make it simpler. Let's just say I'm you. Okay, um, that makes it more complex, but continue. I'm Bradley Berklich, and then I say that's my synonym, my s- s- pseudonym. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Bradley Berklich is a synonym for itself, huh? Um, yeah. And my, my, I say my pseudonym is also Bradley Berklich, but I publish everything that says uh, under the pseudonym Bradley Berklich and specify in all of my um, like autobiographies or informational sections that Bradley Berklich is a pseudonym. Yes. So then they never find the real me because they assume, well, I couldn't be the real Bradley Berklich. Bradley Berklich is a pseudonym. Ooh, I like that. It's tricky. It's like Lemony Snicket. Yeah, like Lemony Snicket. Like Bumbernickel Cumberdorch. Who? Bumbernickel Cumberdorch? Yeah. What? Who is that? Bandersnatch Binglebong from the Hobbit movie. He played Smaug. Oh, Bungle Big Vogelbolf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, we got it. We're on the same page. Who fucking named him that? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, honestly, his parents fucking hated him. Did I mention the the woman who who uh, I- I- there's a building at my school named after, and her name is Magic McBride, which makes her sound like a, a like a football basketball player. I see that. I also think uh, there's a little bit of a Terry Pratchett to that. Magic McBride. I see that. Yeah. I still haven't finished Good Omens because I'm stuck on the last like 20 minutes of it. This I keep going back to the same place and then falling asleep r- right away. Oh, um, no. I've been going to bed like right when I'm about to pass out. What um, is that? It depends on the night. It'll be 9 o'clock. Sometimes it'll be 2 o'clock. Sometimes it'll be 3. Sometimes 12. You know, never know. It depends. Mm. I just have a great sleep schedule. Another pseudonym idea. No name, man. Well, the man with no name. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then people will be like, oh, he doesn't have a name. Can't be a pseudonym. He just doesn't even have one. Like, that's that's fucking sick. That's really good. I think I think that's good, too, because, like, you could pull, like, an Odysseus, right? Yeah. Um, And be like, yeah, I'm, I, no man. No man. I am no man. And then, you know, you, like, stab somebody. And then yeah. they're like, no man has stabbed me. And it's like, oh, yeah, cool. Nobody stabbed you. Cool. Good to know. And then no one comes to your aid. That's what I do with the police. For sure. I think no man is really good, actually. I think Odysseus kind of did the best the best pseudonym he could yeah. that anyone could ever do. It was no man. And then you got all that land that's just yours now. Not a dude. Nobody <laughs> here. Don't look. It's like when you knock on the door and, so, and you say, I'm not home. From the, and someone says, yes. I'm not home from the inside. It's like that. And it's like, well, you know, can't argue with that. Um, They're here. Automated voice recording. Pick another prompt. Yeah, go for it. All right. Bathroom DJ. Oh, bathroom DJ. Okay. Imagine this. Yeah. You're in the bathroom. Yes. And there's also a DJ in there. Let me set the scene. Okay. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> okay. Sorry, hold on. It's really good. So I good. got a uh, bathroom. I got DJ. Okay, so you walk into the bathroom because you yes. not because you actually have to go, but you hear some like funky beats, right? DJ. 
or whatever the kids are listening to these days. You hear that from outside and you're like, oh, better check this out. Sounds like there's a party in here. Um, yes. And you walk in and there's just like two dudes pissing somebody in the in the handicap stall and one more stall. And and then all of a sudden, like, you're like, you know, I should probably use the bathroom and you sit down. And then like you got like a big, loud fart about to come out before you can yeah. <laughs> before you can do anything. You know? Okay. Yeah. But here's the cool thing. Skrillex is playing at a deafening volume over the bathroom speakers. So it's like... And like, nobody knows if it was a fart or if it was just the song. Aiden, I hate this. Okay. It was good up until Skrillex fart. Let me, <laughs> let me give you another scenario. So you walk into the bathroom, both the stalls are filled, and there's one guy pissing. You walk up to the other urinal. Um, the other person says, hey, how are you? Because they are a horrible person who tries to communicate to other people vocally in the bathroom. And you don't want to talk to them, but you don't have to because you don't even hear them say, hi, how are you? Over the sound of... Like, that's playing in the background... Uh, It creates jobs is another thing. This creates jobs in our economy. You don't have to talk to people in the bathroom. You can do like a thick fart um, over the music. Um, Maybe we could have like some experimental bathroom DJs who are playing some music that maybe has running water sounds or like uh, or like plops like like water plops in it. So it's just sort of like. And then it's just sort of like you walk into the bathroom and you just sort of hear the sounds of pissing and pooping and stuff. And so you don't know if that's like the experimental music. And it's and it's done to the beat, though. Then wouldn't you have to do it to the beat in order to not be not be found? Well, no, that's I think, it's I syncopation. Think we've invented it's a, synco- a, it's a syncopated. Game. It's a syncopated shit. You know those electronic toilets they have? In Japan, yeah. You did uh, Beat Saber. <laughs> What if you did a rhythm pooping game? This is so dumb. I'm no. saying this out loud. I'm an adult. Keep rhythm going. pooping game. <laughs> rhythm poop. <laughs> People listen to this show. Real life individuals. There's like some person older than I am who's like, oh, what, are you, what are you doing with your afternoon? I'm listening to this kid say rhythm poop. <laughs> That's you all it p- is. <laughs> He got a piss to the beat. That's all it is, folks. Piss to the beat. <laughs> How do you even... <laughs> it's a stream. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do that clench thing where you stop the stream. Um. Ah. Ah. <laughs> but I got a hundred. Okay. Clearly, this is a good idea. <laughs> Creates jobs. <laughs> it stops social anxiety of all sorts in the bathroom. Uh, it, it's a fun game for everyone involved. Maybe there's like a leaderboard you can type in. The other game is is pee on the iPad, where there's an iPad. Pee on the iPad. Yeah. <laughs> Does it do the anything, iPad. or is it just the goal to the piss iPad on the screams, iPad? No. no. When you pee on it, I like and, that a lot. Or or like like one of the carnival games where it's like spray the water at the thing in order to win the prize, and like yeah. while you're doing it. The thing goes up above the urinal, like someone walks in, and your thing is really high. Like, wow, that guy is like killing it over and there. I think maybe too, you can like, there's sensors to determine how far away from the urinal you're standing. So if you can arc it from like a long distance, you get more points. Definitely. I also think you enter your initials every time you finish a game, and then everyone just enters them as ass and p as a funny joke. P p poo ass. That's ridiculous. Like an actual sentient p would play a game that was like a zoolander quote i don't even know what that one was that did kind of sound like derek zoolander (laughs) from the movie zoolander (laughs) yeah i think bathroom dj is really good can you tip can you tip the bathroom dj to like do requests sure that sounds reasonable uh possible applications include rick rolling okay seduction you gotta set the mood wait okay well, you in know, a bathroom? anything can happen in a bathroom. Oh, perfect music to jewel to. I don't know what high school kids are listening to these days, but I do know they love to jewel in the bathroom. And do high school kids know what Redbone is still? I was an OG. I think that was the main jeweling song when we were in high school. Yeah. 
That was a pretty good song. People would walk in like with their boom boxes on their shoulders and it was really funny because it's not the 80s anymore and they would walk into the bathroom and they'd be like, it's time to jewel. Cool. Jewel. Jewel. I had this funny image earlier today of like in my head of like a physics professor saying the word jewels to refer to like the energy thing and everyone in the class laughing. It's not that funny. But I couldn't figure out how to make a good tweet out of it, so I figured I'd say some dumb bullshit on here, and then at least it would be recorded somewhere. That was sort of a sad note, depressing note to end that prompt on. Bradley, can I pick one for you to tell me about? Yeah, sure. How should two people who don't speak the same language communicate? Ah, they should write. No, they don't speak the same language. They should think really hard at each other. Okay, that's good. Do you get like there? You're now. I could see some problems with this, though. Like, let's say you're think you and I don't speak the same language. You are really thinking really hard at me, and you're looking at me to sort of like send the vibe that you're thinking really hard at me. And your brow's all furrowed, and now you're thinking just like super positive thoughts, like, "Oh my god, my friend Aiden's so cool. He's so so funny. He's so much funnier than everyone I've ever met. He's got really nice abs, solid yeah, butt. Of course, the things that you usually think. But I look at you. And I see this furrowed brow and this concentrated expression, and maybe I don't pick up on your thoughts right away, and or, or maybe at all. Maybe I'm not someone with ESP, which I know is rare. I know most people have it, but maybe I'm not someone yeah. with ESP. So I just think that you, my good friend, who I look at all the time, and I'm like, wow, that's Bradley. He's so cool. He's so much funnier than me. Uh, you know, like that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, the things I always think, nice ass, things I always think about you. I think, what if I think you're mad at me and you're my friend and I have a lot of respect for you, but I think you're mad at me because you're thinking super hard at me and I'm just not picking up on that. Ah, yes. Well, Aiden, we actually speak the same language. So that would never happen because we we speak the language the same. We do the same one? Yes. Okay, but Bradley, hold on. Because okay. I know you've did improv before and... When someone builds a reality, such as in a reality where we don't speak the same language, oh. let's say hypothetically, then you you work off that reality instead of off of the reality that you normally live in. Like, I don't go into improv class and just be like, hey, guys, what's up? I'm Aiden. I have a test later today. That's not improv. That's just me announcing something to everyone that no one actually cares to hear. Only if you have a test. Then you could be improv you don't have a test. Well, that that's either improv or that's lying, which is... All acting is lying. It's just being fake about who you are. It's That's what acting is. It's all lying. That reminds me of like Kenneth from the uh, 30 Rock. Yes, 30 Rock. Yeah, where he's like, I never act because it's lying and lying is a sin. And then there's also one bit where he's like, I don't make a decision uh, because uh, I just write God on the, the ballot because uh, deciding on the uh the voting ballot is satan's thing because it's deciding aside and then uh what's his name jack donaghy yes yeah, stay with the audience as i explain this very funny joke i didn't think of or make um and these he's like oh no that's republican we count those that was delivered so poorly what's republican who counts what i'm gonna retire off that bit i'm gonna all just right sort bradley's of retired that bit he coalesced it. It's canceled. I have canceled it. The best way to talk if you don't speak the same language is get very close to them and sort of b- perform an interpretive dance, signaling what you mean. Mm-hmm. I think there's birds that so do that. Yeah. If you're just dist- if you're like mad at someone, like the interpretive dance would be punch them. Okay, I like that. Or maybe like flip them off and stick your middle finger up their butt, sort of deal. Yeah, like, and if you're happy with someone, kiss them right on the lips. Right on the lips, really hard. Yes. Re- as soon, yeah, like, vampire style, like, take, like, just a chop. Maybe full teeth, too, instead of kissing them on the yeah. lips, just sort of, like, teeth against their teeth. Because that shows, hey, then you, you can ro- smile, and that shows happiness, too. Do you Romanian kiss? Oh, no, what's that? That's with the teeth? Teeth only, no lip. All no teeth. lip. Uh, my teeth, your neck. My teeth, your neck. That's uh, that's actually the Transylvanian kiss, Bradley. Oh, was I being racist to Romanians? No, yes. the, the joke is vampires. Ah. Like yeah. Transyl, my teeth, your neck. You know, like Transylvania vampires. Come on. Bradley. I do. God. Damn oh, I got it. it. Oh, you got it. Yes. Okay, that took a while. I'm a little slow today.
What were we talking about? Oh, right, communication. Let's say I want to give like a whole speech to a crowd of people. Like, what kind of interpretive dance? And I know you're supposed to get up really close to them, but I think we could use like a like a video camera sort of jumbotron scenario to to handle that part. But if it's a positive speech, do YMCA. Okay, I like that. Uh, If if it's negative, just like pound the ground with your fists and act anguished. And then like the more and the the harder you do that, and the longer you do it for, you communicate sort of more frustration and rage. Yeah, more anguish. Almost. I have now I have a report I have to give next Thursday on anorexia in my uh developmental psychology class. How yes. how should I give that report? So you would you would uh have a piece of food in your hand and put it in your mouth and then spit it out. That's but act bulimia. really sad and then pound the ground with your Bradley? fist and act anguished, yeah? That's bulimia. The throwing up no. one is bulimia. No, 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 you're not throwing up, you're just spitting it out. They you I don't think that that's part of the anorexia. Then you would look at food and you would throw it away. Okay. And you would be really thin. And then Mm -hmm. you would pound the ground. Okay. And they'd get it. I mean, they're all smart people. They're all smart people. They all speak the same language. Wait, no, they don't. Fuck. Oh, shit. I mean, that's why we're doing this. You're actually good. That's fair. Uh, You got a prompt for me? Yeah, sure. I got a prompt for you. What is the best credit card? That's hard. There's a lot of really good ones out there. There's that one yes. that there's that one that uh, Nick Fury did an advertisement for. It's Capital One, I think, and he has an eye patch. So good. Well, actually, no, because yeah. if he has an eye patch and he has that credit card, it's probably because the credit card caused the eye patch. So maybe that's a bad credit card. Does Nick Fury have a credit card? Is that like a Nick Fury personality trait? I think that's one of his main personality traits. There's the big five personality traits, agreeableness, what's it called? Agreeableness, neuroses, um, a, a ownership of a credit card. Um, and that's actually, that's that's all five. So Nice. And that is one of his main, he scored the highest on that out of all the ones on his personality on credit test. Card? On, he scored the highest on credit cards. So you could say his credit score was very high. Ooh, nice. Go Nick Fury. But I think that I think that to, to, if if someone has an like eye patch and also a credit card, that credit card is probably in some way the cause of that eye patch. You had to sell your eye to pay off your debt. Yeah. Or hold on, you know, because I'm a scientist and I know correlation equals causation. So I'm just thinking that either that probably the credit card caused the eye patch or the eye patch caused the credit card. Maybe that is a good credit card for people who have only one eye. Maybe it's like written in a special font that people with only one eye can see better. The the one eye federal credit union only for people with one eye special font. So like if it's, no man if no man blinds you partially, right? Ah. Then you need to go to the the no eye credit the one eye credit unit man. Yeah. So what th- so what this is is this is going to be. Um, someone holds text up really really close to your face, and someone puts text really far away. But, like, you have depth perception, so you can't read both of them at the same time. But a man with no depth perception and only one eye will see both at the same depth and read them effortlessly. That's what the text is like. So that's that's really, really cool. I think that's – I think actually we should probably have more people having only one eye now that I think about it. Because then you can read everything effortlessly. Effortlessly. Effortlessly, because I mean, you don't have to worry about depth perception. If you had more people with less eyes, you would have more eyes, wouldn't you? Because the eyes wouldn't be in the people. We could use them for other things. We could use them for other things, like switching people's eyes out so they can evade the scanners. Fuck yeah. That's a was good that one. A, that was a minority report that reference. Minority report? Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. What is it? Okay, what is it with Greek mythology and like blinding people? I know it's a symbolism thing, but you got Polyphemus. You got... Sophocles' play about the one Oedipus is his name. Yes. Um you got those two and probably some other ones. What is it with Greek mythology and blinding people though? Well, there were only like three things you could do to a person or have done to you and being blind is one of those things. I mean, just sort of like dying, right? Okay, and then what was the they, third they didn't thing? You have enough technology to save you if your limb got cut off. That's true. So you you'd just be dead. Yep. Uh if you got an infection, you'd just be dead. Yes. If your eye left your body, you'd be like, okay. You'd be like, oh, fuck, I can't see, but you wouldn't be dead. So if you wanted your character to live in agony and not be dead, but still be in agony, 
Just take his fucking eye away. Just be like, yoink. That boy's mine. Yoink. Like right out of his head. And then what do you? Oh, I thought of the third. Another another one is the three sisters. Like the the three blind sisters. I can't remember their names right now. The uh, fates. Were they the fates? Those were the fates. You're right. Because the furies are the other ones. It's the fates. I think. Pretty sure it's the fates on this one. Pretty sure. Mm. I think it's the fates this time. Mm. But we're still talking about the the best credit card, are we? Yeah, I think so. Greek mythology eyeball credit card. Yeah, that sounds good. Greek mythology That's eyeball credit card. To. Brad, what what do you have any other ideas about credit cards? Well, I think the best credit card is the one that you don't get. That's That's my personal opinion. Well, now you know there's benefits to having credit cards. Like applying for I loans is easier card. if you have good if you have good yes. credit. Can we can we just agree? Can we just agree that the best credit card is the friends we made along the way? I think so. I think that's the best one, right? It's got to be. Yeah. That's usually the answer. Aw, I have so many good friends. So many great credit cards. So many great credit cards. <laughs> All in my pocket. <laughs> All right, speed wrap up. Here we go. Are we okay to end? Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Let me take my friends out of my pocket really quick. Set them out on the table. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. They can breathe for a little longer. <laughs> Always good, always good. The little Spartan on my MSU uh, Federal Credit Union credit card is, is he's he's breathing finally for the first time. For the first time in forever, I can breathe and also not die. For the first time. So that was a good idea. A, uh, a podcast that we did for you uh, and for ourselves, for mostly for ourselves, but like for you if you want it to be for you. Uh, th- we got some housekeeping to do for you now. Uh, we are on the internet. First of all, we got a Facebook uh, page or group, I guess, called Good Idea Podcast. You can go there to submit prompts, talk about the show, whatever. Sometimes people in the group will post funny quotes from the show. Um, we have a Twitter and a Tumblr and an Instagram, which are all at Good Idea Cast. We post funny pictures on the Instagram that relate to the show in some way. We don't post a ton, but when we do, it's usually pretty funny. Uh, we don't tweet a lot, but you can see when we post new episodes there. Um, as I mentioned in the last episode, we're trying to go to a two-week schedule, which is kind of funny because the last episode was released about three weeks after the episode before it. So, you know, we're struggling with uh, time management, but we'll get there. We will get there. We will find a consistent schedule. Uh, thank you for being patient with us as we do. Uh, we also have a Gmail, which is goodideapodcast at gmail.com. You can email us prompts there. You can talk to us there. If you want to talk about advertising, you can do that. Um, If you like the show, share it uh, or give us a review or both. We do not have an advertising budget, so word of mouth is the best way for us to grow. And the more we grow, the more time and effort we can justify putting into it. So I I know it sucks that we're down to a two-week schedule right now or sometimes probably even three-week schedule right now. But that's partially just because we have really big priorities that are school and you know social lives but if it means a lot to people and we start getting more listeners it's easier for us to produce it's easier for us to justify spending time on that production more often we are on lots of places if you want to share the show we are on itunes we are on stitcher we are on google play we are on overcast we are on libsyn uh probably some other places uh i want to really quick before we sign off thank you guys so much for listening we love you, we appreciate you, and it means a lot to us that you enjoy the dumb shit we say out of our hell mouths. Uh, and I'd also like to thank at Kigo Draws, our friend. Uh, is that Kigo underscore draws, Bradley? Do you know? Can you check for me? I, Yeah, sure. Um, uh, our friend uh, and uh, a friend of the show and personal friend Keegan, who um, is on Instagram and Twitter as at Kigo Draws. And he does the art that is our banner art on like Facebook and whatnot. He's an amazing artist. Check him out. It is Kigo underscore underscore draws. Kigo underscore draws on Instagram and Twitter. Anyway, thank you, Keegan. Thank you all of you for listening. Bradley, what was your favorite idea of the episode? My favorite idea of the episode was going back in time and wiping your crusty zombie. That was very good. How about you? Shit, yo. Uh, that was a, a solid app. Liked a lot of it. I really did enjoy the part about the bathroom DJ. It was it was very it was very entertaining to me, I think, just because I'm in a goofy mood today. Uh Bradley, what is your pick of the week? Did I talk about the fact that I've watched like twenty James Bond movies? 
recently on the last episode 20 james bond movies. Yeah. no no you did not yeah, like the, i think i did talk about the new daniel craig james bond movies oh whatever i recommend dixieland delight by alabama what's yours my pick of the week that's so tough but i think did i do puddles pity party last week i don't think so well if i did i'm just gonna do it again puddles pity party is a uh He's a clown, a man, a man who dresses as a clown, sad clown man, and sings really beautiful music. Uh, he has a, like a America's Got Funniest Talent or whatever the fuck, America's Got Talent video of him yeah. singing all by myself. It's really, really pretty. Gorgeous voice. Um, kind of funny to watch also. Strongly recommend it. He also has a cover of Helena, uh, the song that's by MCR, My Chemical Romance, So Long and Good Night. And it's extremely funny to me because this man is probably in his late 50s, early 60s. And he dresses like a clown. And he dresses like a sad clown in all white makeup and um, sings covers, like genre swap covers of teen songs for teens. He also has multiple Lord covers, a Sia cover. He's very good. Anyway, that's Puddle's Pity Party uh, and the Georgia thing Bradley talked about. That was good idea if you are ever lost in a forest hug a tree it just might hug you back we're done here horrifying